The Time Machine Did It, Chapter 16 I dropped the pigeon I had been spit-shining, rushed over to the elevator, and stepped inside. The briefcase was there. Excitedly, I started fiddling with the dials, then I stopped. I couldn't just hurtle off through time and leave the figurine here. I was being paid to recover it. In theory, anyway. Also, I was a little curious. Why would Pellagra have traveled 62 years into the past to where I was, carrying the figurine I was looking for, and walk right past me with it? Coincidences of that magnitude make me stiffen slightly. And what was Pellagra planning to do with the figurine, now that he was here? I had to find out. I stepped out of the elevator, put the briefcase in a stray dog's mouth, and told him to stay. Then thought better of it, and put the briefcase back in the elevator. Then I started to follow Pellagra. I kept behind him, but at, dis at a discreet distance until he walked up to the steps into the police station. I decided to wait outside. There were policemen in there. After a few minutes, he came back out, no longer carrying the figurine. He looked around at all the old cars in the unfamiliar skyline with a slightly bemused expression, then saw a diner advertising a strictly 1940s Italian dish called Las Spaghettolini. He licked his lips, looked at his watch, smiled as if, he reali as if realizing it didn't really matter to a time traveler what time it was at any particular moment, then went into the diner and sat down. I headed into the police station. I walked up to the desk sergeant and pointed out the figurine, which was perched on the desk next to him. "'Can I have that?' I asked. He said I couldn't have it. It was important evidence. "'Who are you, anyway, and what do you want?' I said I was a friend, a friend who wanted that thing that was on his desk. I offered to buy it. His whole attitude changed. He said I couldn't have the figurine, but just about everything else in the police station was for sale. He started showing me stuff that I could buy and quoting me special prices that he felt were real, a real steal for evidence of this quality, but I insisted I only wanted the figurine. We were at an impasse. I asked to see my lieutenant friend, the one who liked the, fig the future even more than I did. He would go to bat for me and help put this deal across. The desk sergeant said the lieutenant was on extended leave. He had embezzled the police pension fund and bet it all on the Red Faces to win the 1941 World Series, as per the list I had given him. The Red Faces, hampered by the fact that they didn't exist, did not win, and the lieutenant's star had faded here at the station. While the desk sergeant was telling me all this, I slowly tried to steal the figurine. My hand inched ever closer to it, but just before I got hold of it, the desk sergeant picked it up and handed it to another policeman. Put this in the evidence room, he said. The policeman took it and walked off. After he had gone, I looked at the desk sergeant. Where's the evidence room? I asked. Is it near here? He didn't say anything. I pointed. I know it's down that corridor. Then should I turn left or right? Hey, who are you? he asked. You want my real name or my other name? Take your pick. Burley. Two big cops hustled me out of the building and threw me down the steps. Get out, Burley, one of them said. I picked myself up and started heading back towards the elevator. I figured I'd given it my best shot. Now to get back to 2003 where I belonged. At least I could tell Mandible where the figurine was, so I had accomplished part of my mission. I got into the elevator and activated the time machine. The elevator started to shimmer, but just as it was beginning to disappear into time, Big Al Pellagra stepped in. We looked at each other, startled, but before we could react to each other's surprised presence, the elevator began heading for home. Pellagra and I looked straight ahead during the journey, like two strangers on an elevator should. Our eyes strayed toward each other occasionally, but then darted away. The elevator arrived in 2003, and the door opened. Both of us got out without saying anything, and we winded off in opposite directions. I had the presence of mind to keep hold of the briefcase.